Point two, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. So let's think about how this is different from yesterday. Well, we're talking about something that's linear. Parabolas or quadratic functions are not linear because they have a curve to them like that. Linear functions are literally lines. Okay, so this is going to be slightly different than yesterday. What else is different? Two variables. We're not going to have just one variable, not just the x variable. Okay, um, we're going to be having x's and y's. Before we get into the actual inequalities, of, uh, inequalities, what I want to do is I want to talk about two things. How do we graph lines? Some of us are going to have forgotten, and I want to go over a few examples. Um, the other thing that I want to, um, the other thing that I want to talk about is um, a number line versus a region. Because today we're going to be um, shading in regions instead of explicitly saying x is greater than 4 and less than 2 or something like that. Because we have both x's and y's, we're going to be talking about an area, not just a line. Two dimensions, area. One dimension, line. That's how we can think about it. And we can think about um, actual length and area in terms of that too. So there are connections there. First things first, how the heck do we graph lines? We have two different forms. We have the slope intercept form. And we have the general form. Instead of explaining all the nitty gritty details of each, I'm just gonna give an example of each. Because we should have learned how to do this in grade I think grade we, we start in grade 9 anyways, and you definitely do it in grade 10. So this one we're going to say y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. The reason why this is called the slope intercept form uh, is uh, because it gives us the slope rise over run, 2 thirds and the x, sorry, the y-intercept, okay? So when we graph something that looks like this, we start off with the x-intercept, sorry, the y-intercept, I'm just doing a quick sketch here, two and two, just so you know that each one of these things is worth uh, one. We would start at x equals negative five, one, two, three, four, five, and we would, remember, rise and run. We would rise two in the positive direction and run three. Rise two and run three. Rise two and run three, which would be somewhere over here. So this is how we would draw this line. As a good little math student, I'm gonna label it y equals two, thirds x minus 5. Remember what happens if the slope is negative, it will look more, go like this instead, okay? Um, just something just something to remember. So instead we would maybe go down down to an o if it was negative 2 over 3 down to over 3 in the positive direction. The general form is uh, very much like the general form of the parabola. Um, we have, so here's an example, 3x plus 2y uh, plus 9 equals 0. So we have set this thing equal to 0, and we have our x terms, our y terms, and our, um, and our constant here. Easiest way to do this is uh, just um, uh, graph by intercept. So y intercept x equals 0, so instead of having um, an x here, I'm just going to sub 0. So 3 times 0 plus 2y plus 9 equals 0. This just turns to 0, so it becomes 2y plus 9 equals 0. 2y equals negative 9. y equals um, negative 4.5. We do the exact same thing with our x-intercept. So x-intercept y equals 0. So we say 3x plus 2 times 0 plus 9 equals 0. 
3x plus 9 equals 0, 3x equals negative 9, x equals negative 3. So then if I were to graph this thing, and I'm going to just use this, um, this guy right here. Um, add a few tick marks, okay? So I'm going to say, okay, my, at my y-intercept is at negative 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. And my x-intercept is at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So then I would just connect those two lines like that. Make sure it extends forever. And I'm going to label it. 3x plus 2y plus 9 equals 0. Done. So I know that was a really fast review, but I just want to make sure that you know that on my website I'm going to have two worksheets. One, uh, graphing lines using slope intercept and uh, graphing lines using general form um, with full solutions. Okay, It has the answers right there. So there's no, um, no excuse as to why you don't know how to graph a line because I've given you ample practice. I just want to um, erase this information. And I want to give you a few, um, a few little definitions, very similar to what we did yesterday and uh, the quadratics. So if we're to uh, define linear inequalities in two variables, you're going to see two different sorts of, um, two different sorts of things. We're going to see a x plus b y plus c is greater than zero ax plus by plus c is greater than, you guessed it, or equal to zero. We're going to talk about how we denote these two things in a bit. ax plus by plus c is less than zero, and ax plus b, no not p, holy, by plus c is uh, less than or equal to zero. Whenever we see this right here, so it doesn't include the line, okay, we're going to have dotted lines. Whenever we see an actual, um, uh, something that, um, that includes the line, what we're going to do is we're going to have a solid line. Those, uh, those are important things to think about when, uh, when we're doing the examples.